All right, look, I get the title is a little dramatic, right? But I promise you, listen, you're going to need this. Like, you're, you're going to need to know what, you know, task.spawn actually does. Because there's going to be a point, and there probably was already a point, where you faced an issue that task.spawn uh, would have fixed, right? So let me actually show you what task.spawn actually is, right? It's, it's like, I, I can't really explain it. It's just better to show you, right? Let, so let's say you have a script, right? And let's say that you... For, you had a function, right? Let's just, yeah, local function um, called, I don't know, something, right? Whatever, whatever. Just name, name your function, whatever you want, right? And what this function will do is it's going to wait two seconds and then it's going to print out mess, whatever. It's going to pr print something out. It's going to do something, right? And then what you, what you did is you said... You know, four i equals one to five, do right. So you you did a loop where it's gonna go from one and then it's gonna just increase by two, so one, then two, then three, then four, then five, and so it's gonna loop five times and then it's gonna end right. And then what you did was you called the function right. So you're so so you have a function here and you're gonna be calling this function five times right. So what is going to happen? Right. Well, if I play the game right now, you know, let, let's let's just see. Right. Let's just see. Message. Message. As you can see, it prints out the message, but it does so every two seconds. Right. However, what if you didn't want, like, like, like it to print out every two seconds? Like, I, I, I know what, what you know. We have like this way too here, but for example, let's say we had a, a function which. Maybe like maybe like when a player leaves the game, right? <clears throat> Sorry, bro. <laughs> if the player leaves the game, let's say we want to like save their data. Like we have like some big game, you know. We have like we're saving data when the, when the player leaves. We want to like actually, you know, like save their data. But maybe in that save data function, we have a thing where like if we're unable to save the data, then you know we're gonna wait a little bit and then we're gonna try saving the data again. That seems fine. However. What if we want to account for when the server shuts down, right? Because when the server shuts down, the game doesn't consider the players to be leaving. It just considers the server to be shutting down, right? So you do something like game, we have bind to close, right? Um, so this binds a function to be called before the game shuts down, right? So what you probably do is before the game closes, you're probably going to loop through all of the players who are in the server. And then you probably, you know, have a function which saves the data for every player. And you want it to be done as fast as possible, right? So let's say, okay, the function goes through player one, data is successfully saved, cool. The function goes through, through player two, data saved successfully, cool. Then the function goes through player three and player three's data failed to load. So you're gonna wait three seconds or like two, whatever. You're gonna wait some, some seconds and then you're gonna try again, but it still doesn't load. And so you're gonna wait again. Do you know what this does? This makes all of the players that are, you know, like after player three wait right? So if player three's data isn't loading, then player four, player five, player six, all of the other players are all, are going to have to wait until his data loads, right? What if, what if we just wanted to call this function and then almost put it into like a separate script so that like, like we're not going to be waiting for this function. Like it's going to wait and it's going to print message, right? But then we're not going to be like saying like, oh yeah, well, let's wait for this function. And then we do the loop again and let's wait for the function. No, it just, we call the function and then we instantly go to the next function. How do we instantly go to something else? This is where we use task.spawn. So if I say right now, task.spawn, and then I give it the name of the function, which is something. And I don't think you're supposed to use the brackets. Let me check. I might be wrong. Um, yeah, okay, so for some reason, test.spawn doesn't use brackets, and if you, if you were to have, like, something in the function, like, I don't know, like, 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 if you had some variable, then you would do something, you know, you, you would do the name of the function, and then comma, and then you would give it that variable, right? So that, that, that that's how you do it. So, so again, like, usually, usually you would do, like, you'd call the function, and in the brackets, you, you know, give it the variable, but here you do the name of the function, and then you separate the variables with a comma, right? like that. What this is going to do is it's going to spawn the function on a separate thread, which you can just think as if like, uh, th think of a thread as a new script, right? So think of task.spawn as if it creates a brand new script 
and runs the function there, right? So, so imagine if we had five scripts right now, all running this function five times. Well, what's going to happen is all of them are going to wait two seconds, and then all of them are going to print message at the same exact time, right? So let me just remove hello because there, there's no point in this, right? So what this is going to do is it's going to loop five times. It's going to task dot spawn a function, and it's not going to wait. It's going to immediately spawn it again and again and again five times. So if I run the game right now, it's going to wait two seconds. It's going to, yeah, as you can see, it instantly runs all five functions instead of waiting like, okay, function, wait. Okay, oh, function, wait. Like it doesn't wait, right? This is what like multi-threading is. And what a thread is, it's effectively like, you can think of a thread as like a script, right? So for example, you know, like 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 how Roblox scripts work and how almost every script works is go from top to bottom, right? And so obviously the whole purpose of a wait statement is that you wait. You know, you don't you don't go to the next line, you wait and then you go to the next line, right? But then for example, if I had another script, right? If I had a script two. If this script has if the first script has a wait statement, Will this wait statement affect some other script? No, it won't, right? Because for for example, let's say in this script, I just I just wait two seconds, just 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 off the bat, right? And then in this script will print hello world. Well, the second script doesn't care, right? Oh yeah, and then it prints the okay, whatever. But but, but as you can see, the second script doesn't care what you know the first script has, right? Because this is its own thread, right? So this script is its own thread and this script is its own thread. What task.spawn is doing is it creates a new thread where this function is ran, right? So on that thread, yeah, it respects wait, right? So in this case, it's gonna create five threads and then on all of the threads, it's gonna run this function at the same time, right? So basically it allows you to, you know, to still, you know, do the wait on the function and everything, but it like, as you saw, right, it's not going to go through the function one by one. It's just going to run them all immediately, which I'm sure, you know, that's either something you've already gone through and you're like, wow, yeah, that's amazing. Maybe you're in, in the rare scenario where you're actually going through this right now. So thank you. know, You're welcome. Um, but if you haven't gone through this, you definitely will. There's definitely going to be a moment where you, you'll you need to use task.spawn, right? Now, I believe there's more to task. Um, yeah, task.wait, which is like apparently a better wait because um, it's like more accurate or something, right? So you could use task.wait instead of wait. I don't I don't really know. It doesn't matter. Um, you could do defer, which calls resume. I'll be honest, I'm not too sure what many of these are. This one schedules a function to be called. Okay, so this seems like this is like task.spawn, but with a wait statement. So if I do two and then I give it the function, then it, when I run this, it's going to wait two seconds and then it's going to call the function. So I'm actually curious what what will happen. Okay, I'll, I'll remove the wait two. Will this have the same effect of like where it prints message every two seconds or will it print message five times after two seconds? I'm, I, I, I'm actually curious. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so it does print message out five seconds. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll actually I'll delete script number two because there's no point in it, right? Okay, so task dot delay. It also creates like you know the, the like a separate thread for each function, and then on that thread it waits two seconds or whatever you put here, and then it runs whatever function that you give it, right? That's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Task dot. What else do we have? Cancel. Okay, so so this cancels the thread, right? Um. And you can actually give it a thread. So this is very interesting. I'm actually not too sure how you can access threads. Let me see. Yeah, honestly, this this stuff is a little complex to me. Like I'm like I know I know how to how to do task dot spawn, and and now I guess task dot delay because they're kind of similar, and that's about it. So I'm not sure how you, how you would cancel a thread, but knowing what you know now, you probably understand what this means, right? It just you know, there's a thread here and it just shuts it down, right? So the thread isn't going to run any code anymore. Task dot, let's see, synchronize, causes the following code to be run in serial. What I assume this does is it adds a thread inside of this script. That's kind of what I assume. And then desynchronize causes the following code to be run in parallel. Okay, okay, I see. So yeah, this basically does the same thing where like it, it takes the code and it just 
creates a separate thread for it. So again, don't worry about all of this. This is confusing. Just remember you have you have task dot spawn and task dot delay. You know, basically basically do, do the same thing. Um, that's kind of the idea behind threads, right? So a script is a thread, and then that's how you make new threads, right? That's that's how you make, you know, like 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 if you have code with wait statements, that's how you make that code run um like together, like parallel to one another, instead of having to wait, like, oh, I'll wait five seconds and then I can access my code. No, instead of waiting five seconds and doing something, you can just take this, you, you know, you can you can you, you can like cut out that section where it's waiting. You can put it into like its own script and then you can just without having to wait, you can continue, you know, with whatever line of code you have. Also worth noting, it doesn't actually create a new script, right? Like I'm just using this as an example. It just creates it creates a thread which you can't see which runs the code over there, right? The existence of task.cancel, I know I've been blabbering on just my bad, right? But the existence of task.cancel does seem like you are able to access these threads. Again, I'm not sure how, but it seems like you can. In the comments, please let me know. Um, but yeah, so it doesn't like actually add anything here, right? It just, it creates like a thread for the code, which we can't see, which we just kind of have to know it's there or whatever, right? And then once the, once the thread has been completed, it gets deleted, right? So don't worry about having to like delete a thread on like, on like, you know, manually. Like I'm pretty sure once it's done, it just deletes itself automatically. So, you know, you don't have to worry about any like data leaks or whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, hopefully you found this helpful. Check out the newsletter in the comments and we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.